Hi, this is Tom with a new Blender tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to make high quality wireframe renders good enough for drawings and model showcasing. Using the freestyle and keyframing functions of Blender, we can make them quickly, easily, and efficiently. I got the idea for this video from a commission I received a few months ago. I can't show you the renders I did for him, so instead I'll be using the keyboard I made a few months back for the demonstration. There's a link to that tutorial series in the description below. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our camera perspectives. So we're going to go into camera view, go into object properties, and we're going to select the camera in our collection and set all of the angles to zero. Like that, and put it in the center of our world. And this is going to give us a top down view of my model, which is a keyboard, but yours will be different. I'm going to change it to orthographic mode in the camera properties and that will mean that any perspective is removed. Now we're going to zoom in to the keyboard by pressing this orthographic scale or sliding this value down and we want it just so both sides are in like this. This is good enough. <clears throat> and at this point we're going to add some keyframes. So I'm going to keyframe orthographic orthographic scale, shift X and Y, and all of these as well. And now we're going to turn on auto keyframing and advance the frame by one. Now we're going, to, we're going to go into this panel by pressing N, pressing view, camera to view, and we're going to move the camera to sort of where it should be for a front perspective. Oops. And then we're going to go into back into the object properties and we're going to change all of these to rounded off values. And you can see here we need to raise it up a bit. So I'm going to do that with the, X, with the Z and that looks good. We might want to scale it in a bit. So that's frame two. And so you can see, that go from there to there, and we'll do the same for each, each elevation. Or I also want an isometric view, which is, I'll show you what it looks like. Obviously. No, wait, I can do better. This is future Tom here, who's currently editing this video. I'd like to explain isometric views a little better than I did in the video. An isometric view is a 3D view of a model where several elevations are shown. This makes it easier for the people reading the drawings to piece together the different views to better visualize the model. This is usually done in orthographic mode, but in this video I show it in perspective view, just to add something different. And with that, back to the video. That looks good. But you can see we've wasted all these frames, so I'm going to cut it off at 5. By, press, by going into here and pressing 5. And what we can do is we can play this animation, and we can see that it goes a bit too fast. So what we're going to go to do is we're going to go into render properties, you know, output, render output properties. I'm going to change this to a custom frame rate of one. And this is just long enough to see each of the frames clearly enough. So there you go. So that's output, pot output properties, frame rate, custom one. And we'll be changing some of these later as well. <coughs> So that's each of these done. So we've got a view of each now. We're going to turn off auto keying, because we're done with that now. And we can turn off camera to view, because I'm going to hide our camera and our light, because we won't need that even in the future. So we're going to delete that anyway. Now we're going to add the freestyle effect. And to do this, we're going to have to go into render properties and check this box next down here next to freestyle. You have to turn it on in render properties, but we don't do any of the changing of the settings in here. We do it in layer properties. So we're going to collapse all of the other ones apart from freestyle. Now these are some general settings to do with it. You don't really change these often. Maybe the crease angle, but I'll tell you about that later on. The main ones we change are in freestyle line set and freestyle line style. Both panels are explained really well on the blender.org website, which I'll link in the description below. We won't be changing anything in the line style tab for this video, but you may want to look at it anyway for your own projects. So now we're going to start mixing and matching these options. I'm going to turn off face, max, face marks because I don't use it. 
but the rest can stay the same. And we're, for the minute, we're going to work on the case, because that's the simplest bit, because it's just a box, effectively. So I'm going to turn off the keycaps collection, and we're going to, I'm going to start with the crease option. And there's no real way of testing this other than rendering it out. So for, first I'm going to assign this to the case and call this case by doing that, clicking on it and changing the name. And we're going to render it out the first frame, which should be a top down view. Yeah. So I'm going to change my render settings to cycles and render sampling to around 32 for this because it went too long. You can see the outline of this is white because, and we've got, right, this probably isn't the best example. So I'm gonna to go to the isometric view and render it again. And we can see that we've got some lines, but they're not all appearing. So we can see that the outer edge is not given a line. So we're going to try and fix that by adding in a contour. And let's try that again. And that's fixed a lot of the issues we had. So that looks like it might work. So I'm going to try other views. See if it works with all of them. You can see here that it's not working the best because there's actually a curve here. And a curve here. So that doesn't work, we know that doesn't work, we need to fix that. And as far as I know, this can only really be fixed with the edge mark option, which is probably the most powerful one, because it allows you to specify exactly which lines you want to be you want to be given a edge or line. And the way you do that, you press Ctrl E, mark freestyle edge, and it gives it these green lines, which you can and I'm going to do that to each of these. Now I've decided to mark the contour as well, so I can remove that later. And we're going to mark those as freestyle edges. And that looks like it will work. So contour off, because we've made the outer edges have lines. And let's do a quick, that looks good and in isometric view, that that works all right. So that's worked for the case. We've done the case. Now it's time to work on the keycaps. These are much harder because there's so many and they've got lots of vertices and all that. So let's work on that. We're going to add a new line set, call it caps. And we're going to give it a collection and caps. Now we're going to use the silhouette and the edge marks for these. Because if we, sh I'll show you the silhouette, we can see that we've got the general outline, but we can't see, so there's meant to be lines here. There's meant to be defining lines of the keycaps. So we're going to add those in, which would take an absolute age if we had to go to each one and manually add the line. Because you'd have to go into these, select these, 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 all of them for every single one. But we can speed it up by, so I'm going to select any uh, objects which are the same and you want to be the same. And you can see I've selected this end one. I'm going to press Control L to link object data. This means that when I select this edge, it selects them on all of these. So now we can just go into here, select these, and then mark that edge. So now we can see that this top row will hopefully, and that looks good. You can see we're missing it just a bit there. So we're going to add a bit more. But otherwise, these top row looks great. This top row looks great. And we can select any one of these and it will affect all of them. So now I'm going to do that for the rest of the caps. Unfortunately, these big ones and these, no, these are the same. So these ones here, which are specialty, you'll have to do manually. But these ones, these ones, these ones, these ones. They're all of the same type, depending on which one. So I'm gonna do that now, I'll speed that up for you. But 
if we go into rendered mode, I've done all these. So render it out a bit, and we can see that these look cool. These are done with a bit of artifacting every now and again, but we can fix that in post. So now we're going to bring back the case and see what they look. And this looked great, but as we can see in... Okay, so we can see from this one, this first top-down view mode, we can see that these have these weird art, uh, extra lines that we don't need. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to duplicate this keyboard and move it to the left. And I'm going to move it up. So all of these four, we're going to use this one. Whereas this one, we're going to use the fifth. We're going to get make a new... So these caps are called perspective key caps because the case will say the same and the third one will be caps key caps and we'll give it silhouette only and crease no not crease in fact we don't need crease and we'll select we're going to move these to a new collection these key caps only by pressing M new collection normal key caps and that's that done so we're going to select this collection normal key caps and then for animating it we're going to this is going to be because I've parented this the key caps to the case so all I need to move is the case so I'm going to set the keyframe of this to be so I'm going to set this keyframe here, but out of shot for the other ones. So you can see it moves back and forth, back into place. And now we just need to move this one to zero, zero. So this case to zero, zero, and align it slightly. That's good enough. So we'll set this keyframe. And then at four, we want to move it. At four, we want it to be the same place. And then at five, we want to. So that's good. So what we've done there is we've given, because perspective and orthographic views have so different um, requirements for what's being visible, we've given them two models. So that's that. And now we just need to render it out. But before that, you'll notice that I my model my renders have a completely white case or model in fact and that's because ooh, and that's because I've removed all BSDF from these textures so by doing that I've just added a RGB node like a import RGB and then just plugged it into that and that's just uh, just plastering this color all over it which means that is very clean I like the way it looks, you might not, you might just prefer to keep the old textures, but I like the way it looks. And you can see in this, we can see this grey background, that's not great. So I'm going to go into world properties, change the colour to white, and make sure that the strength is 1. And that will mean that the entire thing is white. And this looks great. So now we would want to render out our image sequence. But while we're on the topic of colour, make sure you go into Render Properties, go to Colour Management and change it from Filmic to Standard. This will give it a pure white appearance and remove any distortion. I'm going to change it to GPU and I'm going to select File Path to go out to. And I'll render it out using RGB using PNG because that's better for this case. The samples, the amount of samples affects the line quality. So if I do a render ca a sample count of one, it renders quickly, but you can see that they have no NTA aliasing. So, and we want that for, so I'm gonna use 64. Let's see, that renders quickly. And each line should have some anti aliasing along the edges, which is nice, which is exactly what we want. So now you would render out your image sequence like this. You would remove any artifacts from the, from the images using an image editing program. Takeaways from this are that by combining different settings, we create the desired result. So it kind of is a bit mix and match and trial and error, but there's no re there's no real formula for everything. And that's it for this video. I hope I was able to help out. If I did, I would appreciate a like or a comment. And if you really like my content, then consider clicking subscribe or check out some of my previous videos for more. Thanks for watching.